Good morning, everybody. It's a Monday morning at 6 a.m. Crete's on the job, pumps all ready to go. We've got a couple of slabs we're doing today. The house slab's already been done, so we're here to do the garage slab and the patio slab all back up here on a nice lake. Really, really thick edges on this one. Garage is 32, 32. Patio's around 24 by 10. Wire mesh, rebar in the edges. These are all engineered by an engineer, and then there's an architect involved. Kind of extensive for just a residential, but it is what it is. So we're here just to pour the concrete. Garage slopes a little bit that way for the pitch, but this is how they're setting them up here. It's got a uh, stay go for a vapor barrier. It's got two inches of styrofoam under it. You can see the radiant heat it's got in it. Be dumping the creed here in any minute. Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. This this project was right in the middle of the summer. We've been going through kind of like a like a heat wave. It's in the 90s. It's high humidity up here in Maine, um, and we got all these floors to do. So it's they're all back to back to back every day. We got different ones to do. So we're gonna get this thing poured out, and you know we we didn't have great access on this. Um, we're working for one of our regular customers on this. So they just figured they'd order us a pump truck if that's, you know, we could have backed the truck right up to where we're starting right here, but then we had to hook on like a 16 foot chute to get it across. And then we have another small pad on the other side of this that would have been even more difficult to reach. So anyway, they wanted to just get us a pump. So we didn't, <laughs> we weren't going to refuse. The, the people we're working for here too also have a, uh, they have a commercial foundation company so they they do all kinds of commercial foundations they do residential foundations they have their own building crew they even have you know their own footing crew that goes around and just does footings so they sent their own guys up here to get this ready for us and we didn't do the we didn't do the house lab on this one they got it all formed up and then they had their they got a guy that just does their commercial concrete floors they had him come up and do this one we must have been busy doing some of their other floors so i don't know they must be under the gun to get these floors in and get going on the building so they had him come up this other guy and do the house floor but they wanted us to do the garage and the patio so we're up here today doing that the garage is 32 by 32 square garage two two car garage it's got these really thick edges and it's got a little kind of like a grade beam pocket in the middle for a lolly column they put the wire mesh down to tie the radiant tubes to to keep the tubes really nice and straight and secure so we got fiber mesh in the concrete itself for reinforcement and then they tied there's a little matter rebar around the edges you can kind of see that so it's a pretty rugged slab for a residential design we actually have there's three loads of concrete coming up to you today there's like 30 yards of concrete in this stuff um, we did snap a chalk line down inside the forms as you saw earlier. I had my my grade set down in there you know, they I Don't know if when we form up slabs like this for a garage we'll use we'll use 2 by 12s and then if we got to go thicker than a 2 by 12 we'll stack a, a 2 by 4 or 2 by 6 on top of it to get thicker and That's just the way we do it these guys, you know, they got these wall panels they use and they'll just lay them down on edge like this you know those are eight footers and they can clip them together like that and then the bracing you know is pretty extensive on them to get the get them all braced bottom and top but it's a lot of work but they do work good once they get them up they don't seem to really move so you know i'm not going to complain if they're setting it up that's that's the way they want to do it then that's fine and we're going to get this first truck dumped out. You can see 10 yards isn't going to go very far when you have really thick edges like that. And the slab itself is supposed to be about a 5 inch slab. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm just shooting my wet pad in the middle using the laser. So we just we make a wet pad with the mag. Check it with the laser. If it's right on grade I'll exit. That means don't step on it. And then we'll use that to strike off from. 
and the edges we magged to the chalk line that we snapped around the chalk line that we set had previously set earlier with the laser. And we're just kick screeding this one today. I'm not sure why we didn't get the power screed out, but the boys just wanted to grab the 14 foot rod and just kick screed it. You can see, you know, when we kick screed together like this, we've been doing it so long, it's it's actually pretty easy to do. You get one good good raker or even two good rakers behind you, and you you know, if you don't have to stop and start and stop and start when you screed something, it makes it a much easier, and it takes. You know, I call that a bay, so that's about a, what, 14 or 15 foot by 15 foot bay. Takes all about 30 seconds to get something like that screeded. And then, uh, you know, there was only room for one truck. A lot of times, if there's room, we'll back two trucks into the pump. So we can go one right after the other. This one, there just wasn't that much room, so we got to wait for one to get out of the way. Then this one backs in. It's going to be the same with the third truck here that should be showing up soon. You can see how really nice that bow floats afterwards. The mix we use is, most of the mixes we use are a 3,500 pound mix. We got mid-range water reducer, so we can pour up to like a six and a half, seven slump with the water reducer in it. And I mean, you can see it coming out of the pump. It flows really nice. The aggregate holds together really good. Nothing really separates. And it just makes for a good floor mix. And we got the microfiber in there, so you can't even tell there's fiber mesh in there. There's, the floors aren't hairy when you trowel them or nothing like that. You don't see any of the fibers. You can polish this stuff if you want. Well, right now, what Darren's doing is he's working his way from one end to the other. When we pour floors like this, we also keep in mind, you know, the finishing process. We want to go from one truck to the other when we power trowel it and not, not skip all around, have one truck in one corner the second truck in the, the opposite corner, then the third truck kind of in between. We, we kind of want to go one, two, three, you know, with the trucks. And if there's more trucks than that, we kind of want to keep them all flowing in the same direction. Just makes power traveling easier. It's a finisher's thing, I guess. We're going to walk this around. We got... You know, being 14 feet with a screed and the slab is 32 feet, we've got to make sure that that center, that center pad is wide enough so we can reach the outside edge with the 14. We don't have, we could get one longer. They do make them longer. We, ha we had a 16 foot screed years ago, but I don't know. We just settled on the 14. We're pretty happy with the 14 as far as the longest one we got. Now, once we get it to there, we can reach... We're going to get around this one set of pipes in here. That'll kind of be the utility room in the garage right there. They'll put their boiler right there, and that'll run the hot water through those tubes. There's a lot of people that heat their garages up here in Maine. Yeah, once we strike off around them, we'll just mag float, mag float the rest of it. If we got a take a little bit out like Luke, uh, Eric's doing right there. We'll just pull a little bit out, smooth it out, and then the bull float will get the rest. No, I, I mean, you can see us screeding. There's not a ton of effort put into it when you know the rhythm and you got the right slump. It really isn't too, too bad, other than bending over. The bending over part really hasn't bothered me over the years. Um, I suppose it could for some people, but I guess we just put something you do every day, you get used to it. So we got about three or four yards left here in the garage, and then we're going to move him over to the patio slab. We'll get we'll get 90 some odd percent of this pumped out. We'll leave a tiny little low spot in the corner in case we're high, and we don't have to shovel any out. What makes it really good about the four of us here um, is we all can screed. So not one, not two guys have to be the only one screeding. All four of us can actually do the screeding. So we pretty much just jump in. You know, whoever's, if someone else is doing something, then we don't have to wait for them, which, which really speeds up the pouring process for us.
There, so once we get enough in there, we're going to... The, the pump guy's already taken the hose, and he's got it... Well, he's right there, actually. But he's got it over to the patio right now. That's the homeowner right there I'm just talking to. All right, grind's all poured. Now we're going to do this little screened-in porch area is what they're calling it. Pretty thick for a screened-in porch, but we'll give them what they want. This slopes away from the building just a little bit too. This would have been part of the part of the job that would have been difficult to reach with a concrete truck because we really couldn't get it down the side of the house slab. So, I mean, 1,200 bucks for a pump. I guess this made it all worth it right here, being able to reach this little thing. It rained the night before. There's quite a bit of water on top of that stego wrap. So we're trying to, as we pour, you know, we try to do the best we can to to work that water out. But sometimes some of it will get trapped, and we just gotta. You know, it'll come up to the surface and you gotta work it off to the surface. The good thing about this slab right here is it, it, it's all getting covered with something. It's got a stone going over it, some type of stone that's about an inch and a quarter thick. So they wanted to leave it down, the grade down from the house slab, you know, an inch and a half or so, and then slope it towards the lake about an inch. And then they'll come in and grout in all the stones, whatever they decide to end up doing. So we did end up snapping a chalk line right there on magging that pad to the chalk line. We'll strike that off and then we'll use that to go by. We snapped a chalk line all the way around the inside of the forms on the other side. You see how when we, when we kick, we call it kick screed and we'll we kind of walk backwards and then we'll just pick our boot up and kick in a little bit of mud right where we just picked our boot out of and that way we don't have any little voids where our feet are as we're screeding it backwards we don't want the concrete too too high behind us right I'm pulling down just about an inch or so of concrete that's about perfect right there and then we definitely don't want it low you don't want to have to stop and start so the guys are doing a pretty good job raking. The screed fit inside there perfectly for us. But we do have we have shorter ones, you know, we got a we got a 13, a 12, a 10, a 8, a 7. Now the key is not getting too much in there, so we don't have to shovel much out, make a big pile on the outside. What do you guys think? Let me know how you think we did on this. So we'll just, we'll leave Darren and Luke to power trial the garage uh, where it's 90 some odd degrees out today. That'll be done probably by about noon time. They'll get it all sawed and they'll be out of this job pretty early. This one we're just going to leave right there like what Darren's leaving that bowl floated. Oh well, yeah, that's it for that. So the screened in porch is going to end up getting like an inch and a quarter stone, like a granite blue stone or something like that right over the top of it. So that'll be the finish so that's all we got to do for that we don't have to get it any better than that and they'll they'll grout in that stone right over the top of that the garage over here we'll have to power trial the garage get that sawed today but it's supposed to, it's really hot and humid right now so that should dry up real quick should be done about noontime on this well thanks again for watching guys we'll see you on the next one